Hello everyone, Owen here today, and um, today we are going to be doing a some more mock reviews. And I feel like you guys haven't got a lot of these recently. It's been more live streams and update videos, so I want to keep doing what I usually do, where I show you what I've built. And uh, today I've built. I've actually got a lot of things to show you. Uh, it is some more British mocks, surprise, but um, some of them. A lot of them are built for one point, which was to uh, build them for a show. Some more background info on that later. Uh, so t today I'll be showing about um, I'll be showing some rolling stock I've made, some vehicles, and some modifications to some old mocks. All right, let's get into it. The first mock is an English uh, freight van, and uh, this was inspired by a. Um, an image on Pinterest. Uh, I'm not sure who built it, but it was a good design. I didn't copy the whole thing. I copied the idea of this grill design on the side, these wings, and the door. Um, I kind of made it the rest of my own. It's uh, it's actually a really good design. I give a good thumbs up to whoever designed it, and. Uh, I didn't give it like any custom trucks because I felt that like it would be a little too much. I wanted to say flex tubing and clips, but maybe one day I'll put some uh, some uh, flex tubing and some covering up on there. But right now I'm satisfied with it with, it, with the way it looks. Um, it kind of took me a while to get these angle pieces and the roof, and I'm happy with the way it turned out. So that's the first piece of rolling stock. The next mock, I'm not sure if it's completely accurate, but it was inspired by the designs of smaller freight uh, flat cars. Um, it's just a little addition to a freight train to give it a little more length. This is one that has custom trucks. Uh, it is a little hard, like I said, it extends it out by uh, two studs, so technically this is an eight wide car. Um, nothing much on the top, some TNT and the bag, an empty bag. It rolls pretty smoothly and that's just the undercarriage. And uh, it's, yeah, like I said, it just extends the freight train a little bit. But it's a nice little detail. And if you have a whole uh, freight train that's just van, uh, freight vans, this is a good uh, difference to have for the rest. This next one is a completely original design and it is a powered freight van. Now, this was a challenge for me because I had never built something so small to be motorized before, and this is my first time using the train motors on the bottom. Not too hard. And uh, this will give you a good amount of power to power a small freight train. Uh, I'm not sure the full capabilities of it, but uh, it's a good performer, and how I did it was on the inside. Oops. I'll put that on later. The top comes up like that. And this is for uh, room for the receiver, and that's the setup in there. And um, I'm actually missing a one by four right here. That's a thing I gotta find. I sort of uh, stuffed the wires all in here. Had some like uh, wall paneling which has space in between. This whole thing is the batter box, and the receivers on the end. That's covered up like that. And I used this piece right. I used the center hole on there and it covers up most of it up. No one will see it. I'm not sure what kind of freight van this originally is supposed to be but I just thought that it would be a good addition because I only have this is my I only have two freight vans now and uh, this would power a freight train since my little engine can't be powered by itself. So yeah I like it. Next up, we have a very much improved brake van. The last design was horrid. It was way too small, way too low, way too chunky, and it just didn't work. So, um, this is the much improved version. This was inspired by Scott Nick One on Flickr. I'll give him credit to that. So, shout out to Scott Nick One on Flickr. And um, it's missing one thing, which is. Uh, Three three sets long uh, r shafts that go right here. Uh, I haven't got my hands on those yet. I also might just use ski poles if I can, if I can't find those shafts. 
But um, that's all that's missing. And then does not use any custom trucks, which is my one thing I'm not super happy about. But I don't really mind it too much because there's not much on the bottom. Um, the door does not open, obviously. It's just a window and a door handle. And there is room in there, I just, you know, no one can get in there. And then I have a stud back here, so if you want to rotate it, you can. And uh, it's a nice, it makes it the train longer, and it definitely does work as a brake fan. Because this length, it kind of actually serves its purpose, and at the same time doesn't take, doesn't like slow the train down too much on R40 curves, which are the basic Lego curves. So yeah, thanks Scott. So I'm just going to do all the trains first, and then get into vehicles. But this next one is something that will get a lot of attention, and it is the uh, a narrow gauge engine. And at first, you're probably wondering what kind of engine this actually is, because it doesn't look like the regular ones you see. No, it's not a saddle tank. It's not a. Um, it's not. It doesn't have a coal bunker at the end. This is an Irish tramway engine, and uh, this. Uh, I'll bring up an image here. This was just a model inspired when I found this. And I found this in a magazine a long time ago, and I was like, that's a very strange engine. Because it was like a regular, it was like half tramway and half regular steam engine. And I noticed that one strange thing about this engine is that it has the coal bunker right there. So these are the water tanks, and the coal bunker is right here next to the steam dome. And uh, the handy thing about this engine was that it has a side paneling for the wheels, so you don't have to actually put a valve gear in there. You can just leave the wheels like that, and no one will know. Um, it was kind of fun fiddling with narrow gauge boilers because it's a funny length. This is a, this is the most common type, although I did find a formula for another kind. Although it does have a lip, which is something that I decided not to use. And uh, the my narrow gauge trains will use a ballpoint coupler. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty effective. On the back, you got a little light. And actually, if I take this off, there's the cab. Only a throttle and three gauges, and you can't see it, but there's a fire in there. So, this was a fun little build, and I'm excited to keep building some more narrow gauge stuff. Since I made an engine, I decided that why not I just make a whole a little freight train and make some rolling stock to go along with the little narrow gauge engine. So here I have a little truck. Um, it's pretty big. The thing was the wheelbase, which was just um, those jumper plates. So it's uh, five sets of it's like five sets from here to here. Ballpoint connection, uh, some detail of like the wood. And uh, this is a thing I, I did where I didn't include a stud on that side, so the wood looks like it's sagging, so you know it's an old freight car. Inside, just another piece of wood and a wheel. And yeah, pretty simple. This next one is actually pretty common with narrow gauge um, railways in England, and it's, I've seen a few different, I've actually seen only one person who built this also in Lego. And it is a narrow gauge gunpowder car. Now the English ones uh, that were uh, standard gauge, uh, they were all black, and then they had a little sim. They had like red um, lining, indicating it was a gunpowder car. But the narrow gauge railways, it looked like a sort of tank car, and then a sort of a. Uh, I'm not really sure how you explain it. It's like not. A full cylinder tank car. It's just kind of like a dome. And uh, I like using the minifigure plates for this one just to use a few up because I've got way too many. Simple um, wheel design. I forgot to put one on this set actually. And then that concludes all my nail gauge uh, rolling stock. I had some spare rails left over and a few wooden, a few uh, 1x6s. So I decided to make a very, very, a very short uh, little narrow gauge line. It's just a straight piece, curve, little bridge, and then ends. The challenge of doing this was getting the curve right. 
But the design you should use goes like this. It's a, a 4x6, then you have jumper plates in the middle, like that. Then you have two of these where it's 2x6s and then have a tile on each end for both of them. Well, just one of them each has different ends. And then repeat. And then when you get to this connection, the connection probably needs some improv improvisation. But that's what I came up with. I don't want to describe it. And then just to save pieces, I made a tiny little bridge. Not much detail in there. I could have added some more. I probably will. It's just the curve connection, which messes everything up. So you can't always get things straight on there. But yeah, so just a little thing for my little narrow gauge strings. So just this morning, um, I was fiddling with my Trojan, and it actually, since the last pictures of my Flickr and my last video I posted of it, it has gone through some changes, then I changed it again this morning. So what you're about to see is after two uh, rebuilds. And uh, I did manage to give Trojan some decals along with something else. Yep, I gave her moving valve gear. So, to be honest, I actually didn't finish it. It's uh, only one side has this valve gear right now. The other side is like the old. But this new side, it does move, which is a good benefit because I've always wanted it to have moving valve gear. Um, I only have one of these gray ones. That's why you see a yellow one right here. Trust me, it bugs me as well. But I'll get some more gray ones pretty soon. Uh, yeah, and so the other thing I added was new roof. Um, if I move these two gentlemen right here, I have new controls, uh, a rear buffer beam, which is also red. And I thought that the old buffer beam was way too, it, didn't look, it, looked, it looked out of place. I did give it decals with the really bad tape on there. I gotta work on that. And then this is something I suggest you, I suggest you all do because if you can build the Trojan and you have these Emerald Knight pieces, then use the Emerald Knight pieces which have these holes in them because they make great portholes for the window. Also added a whistle. And uh, I'm not sure what these boxes about the cylinders are, but whatever they are, I added those. So some, a few small changes, oh these little gold things too. A few small changes, but the biggest one being the moving valve gear. So if you do have these pieces, now to be honest, also, this is a 3D printed rod made by uh, uh, Zephyr on Bricklink. He does that. That was a spare uh, piece that came with a kit I got for something you guys don't know about yet. And um, it's actually, uh, it, it looks very, it looks much better. And uh, if you don't have the piece, which you likely don't, don't worry because you can also use the five long Technic uh, piece, which is like half wide and it's light gray. Though that is chunkier, if you really want this look to your, to the, your Trojan, then um, I can leave the link in the description, which sends you directly to the page where you can buy those parts. So Trojan's got some upgrades, including the new valve gear thing. And uh, even though it is a bit chunky, if you can see that, I like it. Now that we're done with all of the trains, let's move on to some more road-based mocks. The first mock actually makes roads. This is an Aveling Importer um, steamroller. Now technically, this isn't a mock, it's a replica. This is a replica of uh, Carl Greatrix's or Brick Tricks's steamroller he made about f six years ago now. I'll pull up an image here. And uh, this steamroller, you'll notice that there's a big difference, although the only difference is I made the cylinder on the top different and I made the um, thing that held the roller red instead of green. And also the actual roller itself is black and not gray. Um, Technically, it would be great, but I decided that I, that was the main reason I wanted to make the steamrollers because of this piece, which was a perfect idea for our steamroller, so I decided to use that. Um, it's a, it took me a little while, but I got down trying to find all the pieces. I used a lot of green pieces for some hills and stuff. 
And um, if I zoom in here, hang on. So that's a Viking shield piece, and I use that as decorative for the, I don't know what you call it, like the wheel that drives the, the main, the big wheel? I don't know. I call it the, 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 spin, the, the gear wheel. So that's why I use the gear wheel, and then at the back, you have your uh, controls, your coal bunker, which is right there, lantern, step, and then in there's a firebox with a, a lever and some controls. This is a really, this is, this is really good when it turned out, and I'm glad that, because I really liked his steamroller, so shout out to Rectrix, and thank you for the idea basis of the steamroller, and hopefully you're okay with me using it. Another steam-powered contraption would be this steam shovel. Now this was, ba now the first, if you had the book as a kid, you may have realized this is very similar to Mike Mulligan and the steam shovel. Well, to be honest, that I actually pulled up that book because on the very first page, there is a diagram showing you the basics of a steam shovel, so I used that as, say, blueprints. This thing is very fragile. Um, Inspiration for the model was Kale Leapart's steam shovel since he's good with like farm equipment and all the steam equipment. So another basis model, but I tried to do as much originality as I could. A um, little background: these hold up the, the actual thing; they can be lowered to lower the whole thing. Um, this rope right here, which goes in the cab, that controls the arm. This controls, doesn't actually do anything This can, for this model, it, does, it controls the mouth, so it can dump coal without having to tip all the way down. It's kind of like a chewing mouth. And then, um, the rest is pretty simple, it's the steam engine back here which powers all that stuff. And then, for the bottom, um, this was a design I used so I could have one end uh, moving while the other stayed put. That way I could do turn. I could do turns because one end goes one way, the other one goes backwards. And then it just spins around freely. Um, coal bunkers right there. This mock I made some time ago, but I didn't get to show it in time. But now I made some modifications. I'm glad I showed it in its sort of final stage. More modifications to come. Last mock actually took quicker, quicker than I thought. This is a 1938 coupe which is a classic English car and I was going for just the typical you know old-fashioned car and I used a lot of chrome pieces because I had saved up some chrome pieces I bought from my store including these bumpers grills and these headlight pieces which are meant for old cars and uh, they really make it stand out so the more chrome pieces you guys can find the better the mock will look because you know shiny things attract people's eyes uh, for the rims of the car, which is a challenge for a lot of people, I use this method where I have a shaft going through the center right here, and um, then it connects to a clip which holds this uh, curved piece which has cheese soaps on the end. And then um, going back here, I use this method. I not only just describe it, you can just look at it. It's a little chunky, but it satisfies me. And though many people will probably not guess what this actually is without me telling them, um, I think it just is a good old-fashioned English car. Well, guys, wanted to thank you for watching. Uh, this was another another uh, British mocks video. Um, you may be wondering why am I making so many British mocks? Well, in the next video, I'll show you. Won't tell you much. I'll just let your eyes tell a story. Although I will give a little description. Uh, let me know what you guys think about each mock. Um, if the camera's shaky right now, I'm holding it because I have to go so far back to show you guys everything. But um, I'll show you why I've made so many British things. Well, I can give you one reason right now is because, well, I've started to like English uh, vehicle, like, like vehicles a lot. And uh, I've been inspired by many builders on Flickr and on YouTube. So hopefully you guys like this video and uh, the next two videos are really pretty big ones so I uh, hope you hopefully you guys will enjoy those and thank you for watching and have a good day bye